بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Good morning everybody uh, First of all I'd like uh, to thank Amr uh, al-Habib uh, and the organizing committee for the enjoyable meeting that we had uh, last night uh, I believe uh, spine surgeons do have some something else to do other than doing surgeries Now uh, <coughs> I'm going to uh, it's going to be a quick one, uh, talking about cervical uh, facet dislocation. Uh, brief introduction. Uh, <clears throat> it's a potentially uh, most devastating uh, injury involving the axial uh, skeleton in the United States. 11,000 uh, spine cord injury per year. Six uh, to 15 percent of them were uh, related to facet uh, fracture dislocation. Uh, there is a higher association with this kind of injury with um, neurological uh, compromise, commonly affected C5-6 or uh, C6-7. Um, when you want to put it under any of the classification that you like, the most important things to know that the, the spectrum of injury that could be involved with the facet injuries is between facet uh, subluxation, to the uh, complete bilateral dislocation through a first facet when they just kiss each other or unilateral <coughs> dislocation. This is what we mo most of us actually like to see or to interpret when they look at the x-rays. When we see the uh, displacement, if it's less than 25 or it's 25 or beyond that, to, uh, to stage it and to uh, use it as a hint, uh, deciding if it's uh, if it's just subluxation, unilateral, or uh, a bilateral uh, dislocation. It's very challenging uh, area. <clears throat> being uh, uh, an orthopedic surgeon before being a spine surgeon, I know that the most difficult fracture to treat is those related to the joint. So whenever we have problem with the joint, it's tough to treat. And that, the reason behind this is that you're not treating only the fracture. You have ligamentous injury, you have disc disruption, you have neurological sequelae that could happen any time, even when you are attempting reduction, reducing the fracture. Spine instability is a major, a major problem here, and vertebral artery injury as well is a possible uh, issue that could happen. Uh, I'll, I, I, I'm going to show some x-rays for my junior colleagues, what we mean by facet dislocation. If you look at this x-ray, uh, you see clearly the uh, C4-5 uh, 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 sort of subluxation, close to 25. If you, the most important things that also I like to uh, uh, teach our junior colleagues that all the, uh, the AP uh, views have lots of information. If you focus on looking at the uh, spinous processes and you see where are they located when, when you have uh, an injury like this. <clears throat> uh, when you do CT scan for them, on this side, you see not, you see just subluxation and the unilateral dislocation where you see the dislocated facet. And this is a good sign to look at in the CT scan, and we call it the reverse hamburger sign. <clears throat> is that all in this kind of fracture? No. If you look at their MRI, you see how how what what is the extent of of damage that they have in the in the uh, uh, in the posterior ligament by looking at these uh, signals posteriorly and look at the disc it's moving upward it's, it's, it's trying to leave the, its place and moving upward this is exactly what's happening the disruption of the ligament the dislocation of the joint and the migration of the disc so that's what makes this injury unique and uh, need lots of attention in treating it <clears throat> so it's hyperflexion rotation so there is a slide in the uh, facet, in top, one on top of the other, and we get up to 25% uh, of, of dislocation. 73% chance of radicular, uh, uh, radiculopathy, 12% chance of spinal cord injury, and this coronation could happen up to 46%. Uh, and there are some reported uh, cases with uh, uh, neurological compromise that occur after uh, uh, trial of reduction in presence of this herniation. The other case that the other spectrum of this, of the, this kind of injury, and when you have this, this amount of of, uh, of uh, uh, subluxation or dislocation, if you call it, of almost 50% of the 
of the distance. And here we see the dislocation in both facets and both uh, vertebral uh, or reverse hamburger signs in both facet joint posteriorly. And you see here, and the most important that things in this image, that you see where the disc here. Imagine if you're trying to reduce this without paying attention that there might be a disc, this disc may go into the canal. And this is exactly what's happening uh, in, this, in the MRI. Now, it's, it, is, it, is, uh, it happens with extreme hyperflexion, and there is lots of disruption to all ligaments there, and almost 87%, almost the, uh, there is a report up to 87% chance of spine cord injury with bilateral facet dislocation. Now, how to manage? And this is what we are going to, to discuss, and it's, it's, it's actually a more of a controversial issue. Do we need to do MRI before doing anything to this patient or no? Now, if we are going to reduce, do we reduce open or close? And when we have to reduce open and when we have to reduce close, and when we're going to uh, uh, do the, our definitive treatment, are we going to put halo, anterior, posterior, uh, or both? Now, uh, talking about the MRI, there is lots of paper in the literature, if you dig, trying to see when do you need to do MRI or not. And you see these two papers, uh, uh, Vocaro was, was, is, is, is part of these two papers, and he, has, he asked this question in 2002, and in then 2009 he came and distributed a survey among surgeons asking them to, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, to, to assess the need of the MRI, and he, he came up with a very uh, poor agreement among the spine surgeons if they need to do MRI or not. I always go back to this paper, which I like so much, and it's not a matter of MRI, it's a matter of reduction. I don't mind having the MRI if it's not going to delay my reduction, as long as, as, long as I'm going to do my reduction within a, a reasonable time, I don't have problem doing the MRI. So the MRI is not the point. The point is the reduction. So there is uh, the incidence of neurological de deterioration Following close reduction, if it was done in a proper way, is not that common. Uh, the author in this paper recommend early reduction of those patients present with significant motor without prior MRI image. Now, <clears throat> when I'm going to do MRI, if I fail the close reduction, yes, I want to do MRI because I have to go home to take him for open reduction. I want to see where is the disc. Now, close reduction, all of us know the technique of close reduction. The most important things that I want to Pay attention to is do lots of traction, distraction before trying any manipulation. Manipulation actually is very dangerous in these cases, uh, uh, and distraction is the key. If, if you look at this image, if you try to manipulate, all what you're going to do is push the disc back into the canal, where with distraction, you're trying to uh, uh, reduce the joint. Uh, uh, safely without pushing the disc into the canal. This is also a technique for doing it intraoperatively. Now, definitive treatment. <coughs> Variation. This paper was uh, published in 2008, and they distribute 10 cases among 25 surgeons. They're asking them, these cases were unilateral and bilateral, and they're asking them, uh, what is their interpretation to the disc? Is there a displaced disc or not? And what is their preferred approach? There was a surprise uh, uh, conclusion that there was a poor agreement among spine surgeons in regard to the approach preference. So we don't agree in what, in what, what approach we're going to choose in treating those patients. Though most of us, or most of the spine surgeons who are involved in this study, we agree that if, we, that if we, whenever we have a disc, then we have to go anterior. That's one principle. And the second principle that in, they are more in favoring going for uh, anterior and posterior approach whenever they have uh, bilateral facet dislocation. Now, if you're, some people are still doing halo, let me just, when they reduce the uh, the, uh, the uh, facet or unilateral facet dislocation that put the patient in halo. Things that you pay attention to is some criteria that you could pick in the CT scan that tells you that conservative treatment may fail. And this paper was published and uh, commenting on the, uh, <coughs> and the extent of the lateral mass involvement in the fracture and the contribution of the uh, failure of conservative treatment. Two the, minutes. So another... Uh, 
paper for uh, for 90 isolated unilateral facet fracture that prove that uh, 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 most of the patient with cons uh, surgical treatment do have better result. Uh, another uh, paper also recommend the uh, 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 plating or anterior plating, and this is another paper for rand randomizing between anterior and posterior, and uh, to prove that, or it is trying to prove that, uh, uh, that there is no major difference. Anterior group have some better uh, uh, result, and the posterior group have uh, do some have other better result. Uh, just to cut it short, <coughs> uh, the management of traumatic bilateral facet fracture and, and instability. Some <coughs> some of us they do we uh, some of the paper we're just pushing to do only uh, anterior approach for those patient. But this paper proved that there is uh, a chance of 13 percent failure of uh, of uh, anterior fixation uh, uh, only for uh, facet dislocation, especially in those patients who get end plate uh, compression fracture. So we have to pay attention also to the end plates when we are deciding about the type of management of the fracture. You choose whatever algorithm that you, uh, you, uh, you like, but make sure that uh, uh, whenever you have a disc herniation, uh, anterior approach is, 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 is a mandatory, and uh, whenever you have um, uh, 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 difficulty in reducing the the uh, the uh, facet dislocation. Also consider going anterior first. Now this is a, a, a nice uh, uh, also uh, um, uh, way of uh, addressing this fracture. I get this from uh, Atlas of Spine Trauma, and they were looking for exactly what we see in the patient. Some of our patients are not really cooperative, so we cannot examine them. And this, there, there might be a rule for MRI in this in those in those kind of patient to make sure that we are in the safe uh, side. So, in conclusion, this is uh, it. It, ha <coughs> it happened with.